Hello and welcome friends. In my previous recent video about the check engine light and fault codes, I said I would revisit the grounding work I did in an additional video. So here it is. Decades ago, a more experienced mechanic told me that whenever you have an electronic system related problem on a modern vehicle, the first thing to always do is check your grounds. Not only does that make a lot of common sense, but my own experiences have borne that out. I fixed some very mysterious problems over the years just by cleaning or repairing ground wires and terminations. I was hoping that would be the problem this time, but hope has no power and it didn't pan out that way. That didn't fix my cylinder misfire code in that last video, so I didn't include it then. But I want to show you what I did with grounding, because I upgraded the grounding system in my Subaru Outback. Now let's get into checking, cleaning, fixing, and even upgrading the power plant and chassis ground connections. It's important that these ground connections be maintained because all of the control system input and output device signals pass from the power plant to the electronic control module which is located on the floor under the front passenger seat. So the ground connection I'm going to first tackle are these two right here. 12 millimeter bolt head. Just loosen them up. And these ground, these are responsible for grounding the wire loom that's up on top of the engine underneath the intake manifold and I'm not 100% sure but that could be related to the uh, fuel injectors so so it can't hurt to clean this ground just want to make sure they're nice and clean and shiny there then I'm going to use a vice grip to hold on to these. There's actually a stack of ring lugs on here. There's four wires that need to be grounded. There's actually four lugs on this side and looks like two on this side so you want to make sure you clean them all front and back as best as you can so I'm going to hold on to them with this uh, small vice grip with the, it's kind of a needle nose vice grip I don't want to crush them I'm just holding, holding on to them so I can brush them vigorously without brushing, without wire brushing my hand. But I'm also going to wear a protective glove. <laughs> the lugs will be good to ground here for sure. I may have over tightened that one. Gotta be careful. One of the ground points that will need to be checked is right down here. You can see it right there, and it's pretty green with corrosion.
Okay, there's a couple of them there. This braided ground wire seems to go to the bottom over here, and then there's another one here. Okay, so I'll have to try to get at those. And I'm pretty sure I've got the same thing over here. I'm pretty sure there's a ground wire down here as well. And there's one that's green also. I didn't focus on it very well. There's that one down there. Then, there's also that one there. This actually goes to the battery. That's the negative cable for the battery. Might as well clean that ground point too. Okay, that's next. So right here we can see that battery negative cable had a really clean connection to the block. Well, I'm just going to brush it up a little bit, put it back on, and install my new lug with it, my new ground lug. This one is 10 millimeters. It looks clean. Just run a little emery cloth over it here. Okay, that's bright and shiny. That's bright and shiny. So I've decided that this is such an easy ground point to maintain because it's right here, it's easy to clean, you don't have to crawl around under the car and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to run a ground cable from the ground lug down there where the battery goes, the battery cable goes to, up to here. That'll ground the block to the body with a good solid ground and I'm using a heavy gauge wire number six here to fabricate this ground wire. So I just need to get kind of the length I want here. Yeah, that should be good right there. old electrician snipper here. I'll make it a little bit longer. Two, three inches longer. This is just some scrap wire I had laying around. Yeah, I knew that one wasn't going to work. It was for a one, a number one gauge wire. 
I'm just going to have to make it with, with solder. Hopefully solder will hold well enough. It's, it's best to have a mechanically sound connection and then you solder it. The solder keeps it from corroding. Keeps moisture out and so on. You can feel when it slips. Yep. You gotta hold it all the way in okay. there. Where's my, there it is. I'll point this away from us. Let me just see if it's on there good. Seems pretty tight. I can see that the solder was up near the top here. It's pretty full. It's probably good enough. Okay, I had a question for my assistant. Does it matter that that's all fried? No, the insulation here is all burned and toasted, but it doesn't matter because this is just a ground wire. Ah. Okay, so I cleaned that original ground lug off that was there. I cleaned the grounding surface. I added this new ground lug on a six gauge stranded copper wire. It's now connected to the same ground point as the negative battery terminal cable. So I think I'm going to take it for a test ride and see if it makes any difference. Of course we now know that made no difference with this particular engine misfire problem. The 
braided ground straps I replaced last time I had multiple random, seemingly unrelated OBD2 fault codes must still be in decent condition and doing a good enough job. But this new heavy duty ground cable from the engine to the chassis will serve as a backup against any similar grounding problems in the future. I hope this idea helps someone out. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.